Hey, this is Professor Perez from Saddleback College. Today we're going to finish our Introduction to Fractions video series by looking at the lowest common denominator. So anyway, we can't get started without our student of the semester, and that's Charlie. He better be ready to go. Hey, Charlie, you ready to go? Yeah. All right, you better be. Here we go, right there. There's our first problem there. Two-thirds subtract three-halves plus five-sixths. Now notice, all the denominators are different. So in this case, we want to find the lowest common denominator. So what is the lowest common denominator? Basically, it is the smallest number that all the denominators divide evenly into. And once we find the lowest common denominator, we're going to make all of our fractions have that denominator, and then we'll do our addition and subtraction. So Charlie, first of all, what are our denominators? 3, 2, and 6. A 3, 2, and a 6. Now, here's the question, Charlie. What is the smallest number that a 3, 2, and 6 divide evenly into? 12? Okay. 12 is a common denominator, but it's not the lowest. All those numbers divide evenly into 12, but there is a smaller number, Charlie. It's actually 6. 6 is the lowest common denominator because all those numbers divide evenly into a 6. 6 divides into 6 one time that counts. And so, our lowest common denominator is 6. Notice LCD is the abbreviation for our lowest common denominators. So all of our fractions can be written with a denominator of 6. So here we go. We did this in our last video. We have 2 thirds. We're going to write it as a fraction with a denominator of 6, and we're basically going to multiply 2 thirds by a 1, but 1 is going to be written as a fraction. Well, what fraction are you going to write the 1 as? This is how we do this, remember? Charlie, 3 times what is 6? 2 is 2. And so if we multiply the denominator by 2, we must multiply the numerator by 2. And there we go. Now, how do we multiply fractions, Charlie? Straight, straight across, across the top, top and straight across, across the bottom. bottom. That's right. All right. Now, what's 2 times 2, Charlie? 4. 4 and 3 times 2 is 6. There we go. So 2 thirds is actually 4 6. OK, now we're going to subtract 3 halves. Now, how do we write 3 halves as a fraction with a denominator of 6? Again, we're going to multiply the 3 halves by 1, but 1 is going to be written as a fraction. Well, what fraction is it? Well, we look at our denominator. 2 times what is 6, Charlie? 3. 3. And if we multiply the bottom by 3, we must multiply the top by 3. And what's 3 times 3, Charlie? 9. 9 and 2 times 3 is 6. There you go. So 3 halves is 9 6. All right, Charlie. Now, we have 5, 6. Well, 5, 6 already has the lowest common denominator, so we just bring that down and notice all of our fractions have the denominator of 6, so we put a fraction bar over 6, and now we do our arithmetic, 4 subtract 9 plus 5. Now, 4 subtract 9, don't get squared, Charlie. Remember, use some kung fu. Hey, we want 4 subtract 9, but what's 9 subtract 4, Charlie? 5. 5. So if 9 subtract 4 is 5, 4 subtract 9 is negative 5, right? So 4 subtract 9 is negative 5 plus 5 is what, Charlie? 0. 0. So our numerator is 0, our denominator is 6. Now, what is 0 divided by 6, Charlie? Now, if you forgot this, you've got to go back to the division videos, the introduction to division videos, to understand what we're going to do. 0 divided by 6 is what, Charlie? 0 is 0 because 6 times 0 is what? Is zero. 0, right? And so our answer is 0. If you have 0 in the numerator and a non-zero number in the denominator, the answer is 0. Okay, so anyway, let's move on here. Now, here we have 2 thirds subtract 3 halves plus 5 fourths now, Charlie. Now, what are our denominators? 3, 2, and 4. Okay, now what is the smallest number that a 3, a 2, and a 4 divide evenly into? Be careful. This is why it's so important to know your multiplication tables. Charlie, what's the smallest number that a 3, 2, and a 4 divide evenly into? 12. Yes, now it's a 12. So our lowest common denominator is 12, and therefore all of our fractions will be written with a denominator of 12. So here we go, Charlie, 2 thirds. We're going to write it as a fraction with a denominator of 12. Now, what do I multiply that 3 by to get 12? 4. It's a 4, and I must multiply the top by 4. And now, what's 2 times 4, Charlie? 8. 8 and 3 times 4 is 12. There we go. 2 thirds is 8 twelfths. Now, let's go to the 3 halves now. 
going to write 3 halves with a denominator of 12, Charlie. Again, what do I multiply the 2 by to get 12? 6. 6. But if I multiply the bottom by 6, the top has to be multiplied by 6. Charlie, what's 3 times 6? 18. 18 and 2 times 6 is 12. There you go. All right, let's continue on. We have the 5 fourths. Now we've got to change this. We're going to write it with a denominator of 12. And again, 4 times what is 12, Charlie? 3. It's a 3, that's right. And so if you multiply the bottom by 3, you must also multiply the top by 3 there. And what's 5 times 3, Charlie? 15. 15, so there we go. And so all of our fractions have a denominator of 12. We're going to write it all over 12 and put our numerators in with the operations. Eight, subtract 18 plus 15. Now remember, order of operations says you must do addition and subtractions working left to right. Correct, Charlie? Now, 8 subtract 18. Don't get scared. We're trying to do 8 subtract 18, which is a negative number, but if we realize, hey, 18 subtract 8 is what, Charlie? 10 is 10. Then 8 subtract 18 is negative 10. And what's a negative 10 plus 15, Charlie? 5. It's 5. And we have 5 over 12. So there's our answer, 5 twelfths. There you go. It's not too bad. You just got to practice. So let's do one more problem, and we'll make it one of those attitude adjustment problems for him. <laughs> All right, y'all. Here we go. 3 fourths subtract 1 6 plus 3 eighths subtract 3 halves. Ooh, don't get scared. Okay, Charlie, what are our denominators? 4, 6, 8, and 2. Okay, 4, 6, 8, and 2. Now, what is the smallest numbers that a 4, 6, 8, and 2 divides evenly into? 23 million? <sighs> no, it's not, Charlie. I'm going to help you out with this. It's actually a 24. 24 is the one that works. Now, there's some other techniques for finding the lowest common denominator. You can talk to your facilitator, teacher, your parents, your children, and they can show your techniques. But anyway, it's 24. If we know our times tables, we're fine. Okay, Charlie. So our lowest common denominator is a 24, and all of our fractions can be written with that denominator. So here we go. 3 fourths. We're going to write it as a fraction with a denominator of 24. What do I multiply 4 by to get 24, Charlie? 6. 6. So I must also multiply the top by 6. What's 3 times 6, Charlie? 18. 18. So 18 over 24. That takes care of the 3 fourths. Now we move to the 1 6. All right, Charlie. 1 6. What do I multiply 6 by to get 24, Charlie? 4. 4. Very nice. And if I multiply the bottom by 4, the top is also multiplied by 4. What's 1 times 4, Charlie? 4. 4. And of course, 6 times 4 is 24. We go to the next one. 3 eighths. What do I multiply the 8 by to get 24, Charlie? 3. 3. Multiply the top by 3. What's 3 times 3, Charlie? 9. 9. So we have 9 24s for the 3 eighths. And now we have our 3 halves at the end being subtracted. What do I multiply 2 by to get 24, Charlie? 12. 12. So I've got to multiply the top by 12, right? And what's 3 times 12, Charlie? 36. 36. So and 2 times 12 is 24. There's our fractions all written with a denominator of 24, our lowest common denominator. Now, we write our fraction bar with a denominator of 24. We put in our numerators with the operations. And we simply got to do 18 subtract 4 plus 9, subtract 36, don't get scared. This is a tough one. Work left to right, Charlie, so here we go. 18 subtract 4 is what, Charlie? 14. 14. Now, what's 14 plus 9? 23. It's 23. You've got to visualize the number line. So we have 23 subtract 36. Now, this is a tough one, Charlie. What's 36 subtract 23? 13. 13. So 23 subtract 36 is actually a negative 13. And so we have negative 13 over 24. That's a tough one. Now notice, this is a negative answer. Negative 13 divided by 24 can also be written as a negative 13 over 24. These are the same answers. Now that was a tough problem, which means you've got to practice and you've got to go back and practice your addition and subtraction. We've got plenty of videos back there for you to look at. So anyway, that's it for now. We'll see you again soon.